Relationship advice. Update. Would I, 38 female, be an idiot if I got back together with my ex-husband, 37 male, who cheated on me 10 years ago? Original post. My ex, who will call Mike, and I were together since we were 14 and got married at 22. We have two kids together, 15 female and 11 male. My ex's work takes him all over the country for a week every quarter. In one of those trips, he hooked up with one of his co-workers. I never thought he could do something like that cause our relationship was really solid. He confessed immediately after he got home. I actually would have never found out if he didn't. He begged me for forgiveness, said that he still loved me and it was a lapse in judgment, but said he would understand if I wanted a divorce, which is what eventually happened. It was very amicable and he actually gave me more than I expected, house, child support, alimony. It was a slow process but over the years we became friends again and have a good co-parenting dynamic. Mike's a great father and the kids still love him. I got married three years after, and he was actually very supportive. I divorced my second husband two years ago because he changed his mind on kids, I want one last baby. Since the lockdown, Mike has been over frequently. At this point, our relationship is so good we don't need to enforce any of the set visits and such. Well things have been getting hot between us for the last few months and we started having intercourse. I'm a woman with needs too and, to be very honest with you guys, he's still the best guy I've been with after all these years. It's like our bodies were made for each other. He always joked that we were like Prime Pippin and Jordan in bed, and when he said that again, it felt like we were back 10 years ago and we were still together. It was supposed to be just physical but here we are. Just a few hours ago, he brought up the idea of us getting back together. He gave me the most genuine speech about how stupid he was the night he cheated, and how he never stopped loving me in the last 10 years. I was speechless and couldn't say anything, so he just gave me his usual toothy smile and said, it's okay, I'll wait, before driving home. Now I'm lying here in bed typing this out. I'd be lying to you guys if I said I didn't love him. I'd be lying if I said the last few months weren't the happiest I've been in years. And I'd be lying if I said I never forgave him for cheating. I've told him years ago that I already did. If I had to decide right now, I'd jump out of bed and drive to his house and bring him home. It's taking all my willpower not to do so. I love him. However, I also want to think with my brain here. Pros of taking him back. He's a great dad and the kids would have him around more. He's a great provider. He says he still wants kids. I still love him. Cons, I don't know yet, but maybe some of you can help me with that. Any advice on how I should proceed? Now for the top advice before reading the update. He made a big mistake and has spent 10 years paying for it. The main question you need to ask yourself is, whether or not that's enough. You are the only one who can answer that. It sounds like you trust him not to cheat again and that you want him back in you and your kids' lives. So, can you put it behind you and move forward, and not have his affair be a constant dark cloud hanging over the relationship? That's not something you should answer late at night in the middle of a rush of emotions. It's something you need to have an honest and open discussion with him about, not trying to spare his feelings or be a nice person, but based on what you feel deep in your gut. It would probably best to have that discussion in a marriage counselor's office, and have a professional help both of you walk through your feelings in the situation. Usually I'm hard against cheaters, this guy gets an exception. 1. He admitted to you. That speaks volumes to the type of man he is. He loves you that much that even if it hurt you at the time, he still was going to be honest. 2. As a man, when we want one woman, and we put it all on the line like that, chances are, we're ready to settle with her. From this guy said he'd wait, that stuff was like stuff you only see on the movies. That's love, shout out to that man. What do you think would be best for your children, and for you? If you ask me right now? Taking him back. Quite frankly, I have half a mind to just drive to his place right now in the middle of the night to get him. Definitely don't do that. That's very impulsive and potentially reckless. You really have to put your family first. If you really want to pursue this, you should really take it slow. Like this guy just told you that speech hours ago, rushing things with him, or anyone isn't a good idea. Doesn't matter how good the intimacy is, or how chill he is with his own kids, that's like minimum expectations to be honest. The fact that you can't think of a single negative thing, shows to me that you're not thinking about this objectively. Whenever we're smitten by someone, we ignore any potential red flags or negatives with them. Even something like, this guy always forgets to clean his dishes, for example. It may not be something super serious, 
but it's not a positive quality, it's about looking at the entire person, warts and all. Do it. You know you want to, and for the right reasons. I want to do it so badly. And now for the update. It's been a few days now since I've posted and Reddit has given me some solid advice, especially the kind Redditors who messaged me directly. I'm very grateful for this because it helped me calm down and not give in to my impulses. The morning after I posted, I texted Mike saying, that I needed time and space to think about everything. He then replied with, I've waited 10 years, I can wait a bit longer. My heart melted. When the kids woke up, our son was looking for his dad. He's at the age now where he pretty much idolized his dad. I get why though, Mike is an amazing dad. Our daughter gave me the stink eye all morning. After lunch, when our son was in his room playing video games, my daughter confronted me about Mike. She basically said how she knew there was something going on, guess we're not that sneaky, and that she didn't want our fighting to affect their lives. She thought we were fighting. Now, the divorce affected her, but not as badly as expected. We made sure to get her counseling immediately after, and made extra sure her life was as normal as possible. I'm not going to delude myself and think she wasn't hurt by it, but I'm pretty confident in saying we dealt with it pretty well. Or as well as we could. I then had the conversation about how we weren't fighting, but quite the opposite. We were thinking about getting back together. She thought about it for a while and said she was happy for us, and hoped it was forever this time. The next day, I dropped my kids off at my parents' house so I could talk to Mike at his place. We had a long talk about how we felt about each other, what we planned to do about it going forward, and as many of you suggested what he planned to do next time we hit a rough batch, especially since we plan on having a third kid. He told me that the night he cheated still haunted him 10 years later. He told me how it wasn't worth it one bit, and how it was the biggest mistake of his life. He said that if ever we hit a rough patch again, we would talk about it like adults. He even suggested we do couples counseling every now and then even when times are good. I liked this idea. There are some details about our conversation that I want to keep private, but long story short, we got back together. We are going to take it slow and, in every step we take, we both agreed that our children would take priority over everything. He's not going to move in yet, but he would spend a few nights a week at home with us. Later that night, we sat the kids down and broke the news. Daughter didn't say much because she already knew, but our son was over the moon. Since we divorced when he was a baby, the concept of both his parents being together was quite new to him. They obviously asked questions and we answered them. We're also planning on doing family counseling to help make the transition easier for everybody. Overall, I'm really happy right now. Mike made a mistake 10 years ago, but I don't hold it against him and have completely forgiven him for it. I know he loves me now and won't cheat on me anymore. I'm back together now with the love of my life and father of my kids and I couldn't be happier. As I type this out, Mike is in the next room playing video games with our son. I'm not entirely sure what the future will look like, but I'm happy he's back. Thank you Reddit for the advice. It really helped with our talk and how we proceed going forward. I think I'll stay online for an hour or so to reply till the kids are asleep and he comes to bed then it's my turn to have fun. Peace. Now for some top comments. Wishing you the best. Also admire the grown up way you and your ex, your ex ex? are handling this situation. Thanks. And yeah, it's easy when you're both on the same page especially when it comes to putting the kids first above all. I think this comment will be buried, but I was the daughter in almost this exact situation. My parents split when I was 8 and got back together when I was 18 after my mom cheated. My dad never stopped loving her, and they remained friends and co-parented brilliantly the whole 10 years. They've now been back together for almost as long as they were separated, and I've never seen them as happy as they are currently. They've put a lot of work into it and are still working on it, but the big difference, is they communicate properly and neither of them take each other for granted. We've had a very difficult quarantine and I've had to move back in with them, but getting to see their relationship up close has reminded me how lucky I am, and how much I appreciate them. I wish you and your family the best of luck and I'm so proud of you for being able to move forward and forgive. Your story has reminded me how lucky I am and I am so excited for your children to get to experience what I did. I guess everyone is different. My parents split when I was 7 because my dad cheated. They got back together when I was 11, re-engaged by 12, and he was booted again when I was 13 for cheating. Great update, I hope everything works out. 
I also love the fact that not once did you concern yourself with what your friends or family would think, you only cared about the people whose opinions actually mattered. Yeah, the only opinions that matter are mine and the kids. I'm not entirely sure how my parents or anyone else would feel about this, but they don't really know Mike like I do. Sounds like a typical dumb girl response I know hee hee. Now for the next story. Update, my fiancé's sister, 28 female, told me she's in love with me, 27 male, and my fiancé, 28 female, is just settling for me. Original post. My fiancé, Nancy, and I are getting married in December. We've been going through a small rough patch since late June, I felt like everything was okay, but we were just out of sync. We've been together for two years, and this has happened before and we just come out of it usually. I have a very good relationship with my fiancé's twin sister, Peggy. We hung out a lot before she introduced me to her sister, so I've known her longer, and she's one of my best friends and is probably the person that knows me the best other than my family and Nancy. She and her sister also have a great relationship. No resentment, no anger towards each other just sisterly love. Saturday, I received a string of messages from Peggy that were telling me to not marry Nancy. She told me she didn't love me like she should, and if we got married, we'd be in a loveless ex-less marriage. I told her I didn't believe her. She sent me screenshots of messages between her and Nancy. I wish I hadn't read them. She said that I wasn't the love of her life, that I was in her soulmate, that I was just a good option, and would be a good provider and great dad to her kids, that I was nice guy that any girl would be lucky to have, but he's not the one for me. I asked Peggy why she told me all of this, and she said she's my best friend and she loves me. She said she's wanted me forever, but couldn't come between me and her sister like that. She said she'd love me like a wife should, that she fantasizes about being with me intimately, and that I drive her crazy. She asked me to leave Nancy and come be with her. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do about anything. I feel like my life had been turned completely upside down. I don't know where to go from here. Now for the top advice before the update. If you believe that your fiancé might feel this way, that she wasn't just venting dramatically, or that Peggy is nuts enough to fake the messages, then it's a red flag big enough to block the wedding aisle. However, you still owe it to your fiancé to discuss what's going on before ending things, so at least you know what's going on. Maybe her story is totally different. And most importantly, don't get into a relationship with Peggy without a year or two to cool down away from all of them, and maybe find someone better for you who's not part of this messy family dynamic. You realize she could've faked the messages? It's not hard to change a name on a phone. Yeah, OP needs to confront his fiancé about this and see what her reaction is. Are you sure you're not just being tested by them? That would be pretty messed up, I know, but have you considered this? If it is a test, that'd be a red flag for me and I'd be out. Relationship tests are emotionally horrible. Now for the update. I didn't intend for my last post to get as much attention as it did, some people have been messaging for an update, so I guess I'll oblige. So it turns out the texts were faked as most people suspected. Before I spoke to my fiancé Nancy, I was going to let her sister Peggy know that I was going to tell Nancy everything she had informed me of. Peggy then said that I shouldn't do that, that I should just pack and leave, that I shouldn't give her the satisfaction of knowing how much she hurt me. This made me very suspicious and I told Peggy I was still going to tell Nancy. Peggy then begged me over the phone to not tell Nancy, and to just come be with her. I asked her why she didn't want me to tell. She eventually admitted that the texts were fake. I was genuinely shocked that Peggy could do such a thing. She was willing to blow up my relationship and make me look like I was the bad guy. I told her she was crazy, and I for sure was telling Nancy all of this. She cried for me not to, and began bargaining. I really don't want to be the one that has to destroy the relationship between two sisters, so I heard her out. Peggy said that if I didn't tell her, that she'd leave me alone and wouldn't bother me or Nancy like this ever again. I told her I thought Nancy should know, I said that if I don't tell Nancy, then she needs to be the one to do it. Peggy tried to get out of it, but I held to my demands. She begrudgingly agreed. She has till the end of the month to confess. I'm going to do my best to help Nancy repair their relationship, because they've been together since the womb and I don't want them to hate each other if they don't have to. Thanks for all y'all's advice. Now for the closing comments. Wait until Peggy shows Nancy the text she faked from you. 100%. Tell Nancy now please. If not, this is about to be even more tangled and messy than before.
A month to confess? WTF? That is ridiculous. You need to tell your fiancé now. Before Peggy invents a new scheme. Yes. You cannot let her be the one to tell your fiancé, she will screw you over and make it your fault. Look what she's capable of doing. Tell your fiancé immediately. You've just found out exactly what a scheming liar your future sister-in-law is. And the pain she was willing to inflict on you and her to achieve her goals. And you've now chosen to protect this person over your fiancé. You're making a mistake. You now share a secret with her against and from your partner, and have just given her the time and space needed to do something else. Hopefully it's only to apologize, but either way, that's potentially a month of humiliation for your fiancé, as you and her sister walk around with this huge secret, ready to implode her life and you the person who should be her partner in this moment is instead her sister's partner in this crisis and continuing the lies. You don't owe the sister anything. Their relationship is going to be imploded regardless. Worry about your own relationship. All you're doing now is demonstrating that others are more important than your future wife. Every moment you spend not telling her is humiliation for her, and now you're lying by omission about a hugely significant event in all your lives. To be honest, Having her turn up immediately or putting her on speakerphone right there and then to explain herself to her sister, was all that was needed. What is going to be said in a month that couldn't be said right there and then? Stop giving this person space in your relationship. The fault was all hers, but now you've decided to also add yourself to the problem list. Why? Good luck regardless. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.